And What's up? Talk to me. How high are your expectations for Sam Darnold and the Vikings? Very high. I have said all offseason that I think the Vikings could go to the playoffs with Sam Darnold. It was the best place for any rookie quarterback to go to and be attached to. And I thought that Sam was in like a perfect place if he was going to be the starter. And I think this is accurate that even after they drafted J.J., Sam was still on track to be the starting quarterback. Uh, I think Without their defense is going to be much improved under Brian Flores if they can get some good cornerback play. I think Sam's journey of going to San Francisco last year and really learning how important the efficiency of his lower body is and timing and whatnot. He's super, super, super talented. He's always been super talented. He's just been in dog crap situations. Minnesota's got a good offensive line. They got one of the best game plan people and game callers in the NFL. They got two really good receivers, one, of, one guy being one of the best in the NFL. I think they got a dynamic back. Hawkinson's going to come off injury. I, I absolutely think that Sam Darnold is good enough to have the Vikings as a playoff football team. I feel like Mina's kind of laughing at you, Loki. I'm nah, yeah, we are laughing on, at him. Nah, we're both I, laughing at him. We, we, Mina's we, on my squad. No, I feel like she's listen, laughing. Listen, at some inside. point in time, so your resume... At some point in time, your resume has to matter. Now, we saw him complete 14 of his 15 passes from a clean pocket last week. We get all of that. That's against the New York Giants. Let's see how he's going to look this Sunday when Nick Bosa and the crew are coming his way. Okay, so sure. don't expect the same results because it ain't going to happen. So let's get that out the way first. Secondly, yeah, I get your point about Justin Jefferson and him having him as a weapon there, and I get that part. But I got to see it to believe it. He's been in the league for seven years, and what you describe him as being – I haven't seen much of from him when he's been in the lineup. So I damn sure I'm not going to assume we're going to see teams. that from him now. Yeah, exactly. He played on okay, terrible that's teams fun. in terrible situations. All right. With terrible there, there, coaches. There is such a thing. You know what, You know what, Dan? If you're around some people with a cold enough, you're going to get one. If you're around some people with a damn virus, you're going to get it. You're going to catch it. You understand what I'm saying? What if you and he looked significantly better when he was with Shanahan and the 49ers. In limited time, of course, but he looked significantly better. Like, so... That point is already made. No you ever heard of that word? You ever heard of that word, Dan? It's actually in the dictionary, right? Do I need to spell it for you? It happens. When you get around certain situations, ultimately you become a byproduct of that. That's what I am saying of Sam Donald. I'm telling you, you know, you're very hopeful, and I can appreciate that, but you sitting up there talking to us like we're supposed to expect a high level of production from this brother. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I got to see it to believe it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I got to see it to believe it. Well, listen. <sighs> Obviously, you're going to play better against a team like the Giants than you are going to be with a significantly more aggressive, higher quality defense like the 49ers. So if they're going to use that game where Sam Darnold maybe doesn't now look as good against the 49ers as an indictment to be like, I told you they can't, I told you, that's absurd. Because you're right, Sam Darnold is not a top two quarterback in the NFL, okay? I'm sorry to break the news to you, Minnesota Vikings fans. I've been super high on Sam Darnold, and I'm very high on the Vikings. But yes, he is not on the level of Patrick Mahomes, okay? He's not Josh Allen. He's not a healthy Joe Burrow, for that matter. Like, we understand that. But this idea that because Sam Darnold failed with the New York Jets, who everyone fails with, right? Uh, with the Carolina Panthers, who everyone fails with. Look at Baker Mayfield with the Carolina Panthers and with the with the Cleveland Browns, okay? He was out of the league. He had one foot out of the league. Now he's becoming a legend in Tampa Bay. I mean, that's, a, that's honestly the perfect example right there. And if you actually look and see how he looked with the 49ers, uh, Sam Darnold, he looked really, really good. And the fact that Mc, that um, Shanahan wanted him already speaks volumes for it. High-level coaches like a Shanahan don't want to mess around with quarterbacks that can't do anything. That's why they moved on from Chance. Right? We don't need Trey Lance. We don't want this thing anymore. I can't do anything with this. I can do something with Sam Darnold. And I know I may need Sam Darnold because the year before, my quarterback got injured. And I don't know if my quarterback's fully healthy necessarily yet. He's recovering from surgery. So, the, so the, the, the fact that they were going to maybe need to use Sam Darnold actually had a high level of probability. And Shanahan said, I want Sam. And that's with a championship level team like the 49ers, clearly Super Bowl contender as they went to the Super Bowl. That already is honestly seeing with your eyes all the evidence you need. All the evidence you need.
not to mention what you actually see him do on the field. And the fact that Kevin O'Connell, which without a doubt was like Orlovsky said, was setting up Sam to be the starter, the star, the starter, without a doubt. From from day one, he pretty much when they were asking him all questions about JJ, he's like, yeah, JJ's looking good, looking good. And Sam Darnold, you know, like he kept trying to be like Sam Darnold here. He was like trying to ease it to the media. Like we're probably going to sit JJ. And I made whole videos about that. That's actually a really good thing. Sit JJ, sit JJ. And when he tore his meniscus, I was like, this is actually not as bad as everyone thinks. We don't have to sound the alarm. It's okay. It's okay. And honestly, as we saw some of these rookie quarterbacks, look, it's definitely being okay. So the fact that Kevin O'Connell's like, I want Sam. The fact that they actually got paid a decent amount of money, um, relatively speaking, of course, for someone of Sam Darnold's level of success that he's had in the NFL goes a long way. It shows you the belief that a great offensive minded head coach like Kevin O'Connell thinks. So yeah, I mean, listen, I've explained that. Yes, he looked great and the Vikings looked great against the Giants and it is indeed the Giants. I get that. I'm not going to waste my time emphasizing that again in another video, but I want to emphasize more that it's just not fair that when a when someone looks great against maybe an inferior team and then expecting them to not have any potential pullback when you're facing a significantly better team um they could lose to the 49ers i don't know how many people are saying that the vikings are going to win the super bowl right like I, even if you're a vikings fan like you know you could feel pretty good about this team have something to root for get to the playoffs be trouble in the playoffs I don't know. Maybe you go on a historic run. Maybe Sam Darnold really does get unleashed and can win a Super Bowl. It's certainly possible, but my gut tells me that the average Vikings fan isn't thinking we can win a Super Bowl right now. You know, right now, let's go. At least that's not my interpretation based off of um, interacting with the fans. So if we accept that to be the truth, well then, yeah, in theory, the 49ers should win this game. They should make the quarterback look uncomfortable, just like the Chiefs made Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens on comfortable right like better teams typically do that to other teams so it doesn't mean it's an indictment on the vikings because they're maybe not a super bowl ready team today and that's okay that doesn't mean that this was a failure it doesn't mean that sam Darnold's a failure kevin o'connell's a failure the vikings are a failure so i did that's where i kind of take issue with all of this um i think the expectations are completely appropriate What's what um, Orlovsky said that that they absolutely can get to the playoffs, especially if the Bears, because I thought Caleb was going to be a little bit. Um, uh, I thought the Bears just as a whole were going to look a little bit better. Um, it's not to say that I'm completely discounting the Bears, um, but, you know, I, I think it would be harder for the Vikings to win the division. So they got to win the wild card. But with that said, which I think I did say in my previous video, like, here is a chance. You can make a statement. If the Vikings beat the 49ers, that will absolutely be a moment where people are now saying, who are the Vikings? Who are Sam Darnold? Like, he is truly a top pick in the NFL, right? Like, that is who he was always meant to be. He just went to a bad situation. Kevin O'Connell is a legit top-tier coach in the NFL. The sky is the limit for this team. Like, if you want to believe that you actually do, for those of you Vikings fans that believe that Super Bowl um, potential is in the Vikings' uh, future, immediate future, well, then this is the game that you show it. So I think I said this in my other video that this is very much a barometer game for me. I'm really excited to see what the Vikings look like against the 49ers. I don't think the Vikings need to beat the 49ers, but they need to look like that they belong, that they're not like in a, that they're just out, that they're just completely outclassed, right? That Sam Darnold doesn't just look completely lost like it, like he is playing in New York, right? If he holds his own, but they still lose, um, even if he just plays, you know, a, a pretty solid game, that would be good enough for me to feel that the Vikings are a threat moving forward, that they can maybe get momentum, that they can maybe even continue to get better. And then when you are in the playoffs, when it is a do or die game, you just really don't know what can happen. You really don't. I mean, we've seen plenty of teams over the years make some fascinating runs and win it all, quite frankly. And again, I'm not going to pretend, you know, just for the sake of trying to pump up Vikings fans that they have this, you know, a, a true chance at winning it all. But we're going to find out who this team is against the 49ers. I don't know why we have to automatically doubt them or automatically assume that it's going to be bad or that if they do look a little bit worse against the 49ers, it somehow means that the Vikings are fool's gold. And that's kind of the issue that I've taken. Kind of that's like Stephen A's kind of all energy like, oh, are you kidding me? They look good against the Giants. That's nothing. They're clearly not going to be as good against the 49ers. Like to me, you're kind of creating this like lose-lose situation. Um, and... You know, it's just not the way I see it.
But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? How high are you on Sam Darnold and the Vikings? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.